Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create a page loader just like this using CSS animations. Now, the way it's going to work is your user is going to be greeted with this uh, when they first visit your web page or your application and then once the page loads up, um, it's going to go away. So let's head into this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. It's going to be a very easy thing to create. Um, if we go inside the text editor right here, we can see I've got this HTML document and it's got nothing inside the style or the body tag. So the first step in creating this loader is going to be to create a new div with a class of loader just like that. Now, preferably you'd put this at the top of your body, but it shouldn't matter where it goes. Now, this div is going to represent essentially the full screen uh, dark gray square that you see here. And then the square and circle animation, we're going to get to that later on. But just keep in mind that this loader class represents the entire uh, full screen space there. So going back inside the CSS, let's add a new rule set for the loader class. Let's give this a position of fixed this way. It's going to appear above everything else and a top of zero and a left of zero. We can also give this a width of 100 VW, meaning 100% of the visible area that the user can see and a height of 100 uh, VH. And that gives us the exact same result, 100% of the visible area. Now, of course, top and left of zero just means that it's going to be in the top left corner. 100% both ways, it's going to be full screen. Let's also give this a display of flex and align items of center and a justify content of center. These three properties are going to allow us to center the circle and square animation, which we're going to get to very shortly. Okay, let's also set just quickly a background of a dark gray. So triple two, I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. Okay. So now let's work on the animation in the middle. So the way it's going to work is we're going to be using the CSS after pseudo class. So we'll say here loader colon colon after. Okay. So this right here, for those of you who aren't aware, essentially this creates a virtual element inside CSS. That's one way to put it, right? So we can style this virtual element however we choose. So pretend this is just like having a div inside here. Okay, so it's a child element of the loader div, right? So let's go up here. The first thing to specify is a content of empty string. This is going to allow the circle slash square to be visible. Okay, let's also give this a width of 50 px and a height of 50 px. Okay. A background of 00958, that is my decode green color. Of course, you want to change this to whatever you want to change it to. I can now save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, and we can see that we get the square in the middle of the page. Now, the reason why it's centered is because we had that justify content up here with the display of flex. Um, and of course, we have that width and a height set giving us a square. So what we saw earlier in the demonstration this right here is a single element that is going to, that is transforming from a square into a circle. So we're going to use CSS to make that transformation and that is done using a CSS animation. So how do we do this? Let's go back inside here and we're going to be specifying some keyframes. So keyframes just define the animation. In our case, we want to take the square, push it up a little bit, convert it into a circle, and then push it all the way back down back into a square and make it larger. So a couple of things going on there. So let's do it step by step so it's easy to understand. If I go back inside VS Code here, let's create a new keyframes with an identifier of loader. You can call this whatever you like. I'm calling it the same class name as the dot loader, but that shouldn't matter. Okay, cool. Now let's specify what happens in the animation. So when the animation starts, we want to begin as we see at the top here, the square goes up. So let's let's take the square and push it up a little bit, okay? We can do so using transform. And we can just say here, translate y to negative 50 px. So push it up 50 pixels. We're gonna also specify a second property here, or second value, it's gonna be scale. Let's decrease the size of the square to be 50%. So up 
and a bit smaller. Okay, cool. Let's also say to, then say at the end of the animation, we want to transform. I'll just copy this, right? I'll paste this here. We're going to say transform positive 50 pixels. So 50 pixels down and then scale back to one, what it usually is. So we have this animation defined. If I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, nothing happens because we need to tell this loader after pseudo class or pseudo element, should I say. I might have said pseudo class before. I actually meant pseudo element. Um, so we have to tell this element here to say animation and tell it to use loader at something like 0.5 seconds. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get the animation. And it happens once. So let's change that. Back inside here. Let's say infinite. This way, it keeps happening infinitely. Save this, back in the browser, refresh, and it keeps happening. So we have that small circle, sorry, that small square into a larger square. Let's add that circle to the equation. We can do so using a border dash radius of 50%. This gives us a circle. And then when we have the two, so the end of the animation, let's put it back to 0% for the border radius. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and it goes from a circle to a square. It might be hard to see, but trust me, it's doing that. Okay, cool. Now, one last thing to finish this animation off is is to make it so it doesn't just appear back at the top. So I want it to be smooth as it transitions from the bottom to the top. Let's compare this and the original. This one here is a smooth transition. So let's go back inside here. To achieve this, we can specify animation direction alternate. Okay, save this back in the browser, refresh. And now it is doing exactly the same thing as the original. So um, alternate is going to essentially take the end of your animation right up here, down in two, and then transition back to the from using an animation. So you get that smooth transition between both. And you can, of course, customize these values as you see fit. You can change the uh, border radius. You can change the translate Y, the scale, and so on. You can even rotate it if you want to. I'll leave it up to you, but you can see here you got this basis for an animation for your page loader. Now, how do we make it work? Well, first, we need to have some content to load in the page. So I've got an image file right here. It's an old thumbnail of mine. So if I go down here, I'm going to include that image in the page. I'll say thumb.jpg. Okay, let's give it a width of 300 or let's say 500 as well. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, and of course we can't see it. Let's set the display of the loader to be none. We're going to set it back to flex later on, but I'll make it display none just so we can see the actual image, right? Refresh, and there it is. Now, the problem is, in order to demonstrate the loader and test it out, this image needs to load slowly. So we can't actually see the loader work if the image takes half a millisecond to load up. Does that make sense? So in order to see our loader, let's go in the in the uh, dev tools here, in the network tab, and then we can just say uh, throttling right up here and set it to be slow 3G. It is now going to mimic a slow 3G connection, giving us a slower download speed, which should now refresh, should make it take a little bit longer to load. And there we go. So. You can see there it's taking a lot longer to load the image. So now we get a chance to actually see the animation and the loader, okay? So let's go back inside VS Code here. And when it comes to the loader, we actually want to keep the display of none, but instead have a second class which enables the loader itself. So let's hop down here. Let's add a loader dash active class to the div. So when the page first loads up, the loader is going to be active and showing to the user. To make this class work, let's go up here. We can target the loader active and set the display to be flex. So back to flex when uh, the, uh, the loader is active. I'll save this back of the browser refresh. 
and it is now going to display as we can see here but once the page finishes loading it's still going to be there so to make it go away we need to simply remove the active class the active class right so let's hop down here inside javascript and we can now say window.addEventListener once everything loads up on the page, so using the load event here, we're going to run this arrow function. This function is simply going to grab onto the div and then remove the active class. Document.querySelector, we can target the loader, then say dot class list dot remove loader dash active. Remember to use the dot for the class selector in this function but then when you go to remove the loader active you do not need to put the dot in there i'll save this go back in the browser refresh and we can see now once it loads up you get the loader it's still loading once it's done it goes away so that's how to use css to create your own page loader so very easy to do and i'll leave in the source code for this down below if you want to of course download it but that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.